Hello and welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller and today we're going to introduce a new segment to this channel called Car Shop. As you know, rolling stock is a really important part of any layout, especially to a small switching layout where you're constantly moving cars around to customers and leads to a lot of maintenance to the cars and a lot of things that you have to do to cars, whether they're new cars to the layout or cars that you've had for a while. And so I thought it would be an interesting feature to talk more about our rolling stock. Uh, so today we're gonna cover uh, something unique and each episode of this car shop, we're gonna talk about a different, different aspect of our rolling stock. So today, um, let's go ahead and see what we've got in the South Omaha yard. Uh, the Stockyard Industrial Lead, as you know, gets its cars from Interchange here at the yard. And so we've got a, a new car that's coming in that we're gonna work on. So. Let's see what the Railcar America Alco C415 has for us. All right, so today we've got a new Intermountain boxcar. This is a car that I just picked up um, a week or so ago, and it's part of the Intermountain value line. So this is a HO Gunderson 50 foot high cube double door boxcar with the flat roof. Uh, this is basically a re-release of an old, I believe it was ENC Shops cars. I kind of lost track of how many different times they changed their name over the years. Um, uh, now Intermountain is coming out with these cars. Now there's one thing you'll notice about this car that's very wrong that we're going to have to change about it. Um, let me know if, if, uh, if there are any guesses out there. If you guess that it's a BNSF car and there's no BNSF on this layout, then you're correct. So we're going to change this into an SPSF car. And what I find the easiest thing to do when I'm changing um, into like a fantasy road is I really like to start with something that's already um, decorated for another road. It makes it a lot easier because you've already got all the, the data, um, the other detail stuff, the cars painted in the correct scheme. And so for uh, modern SPSF cars, what I like to use is BNSF cars because it's basically the... Um, the way that the Santa Fe was was painting their cars in the mid 80s and it would have been the SPSF um, paint scheme essentially. So we're going to take this car and rebadge it into an SPSF. So I'm going to show you two techniques of how to do that. We're going to try one on one side, one on the other and see what works best. So let's take a look at this car. So basically what we need to do is remove the lettering here. I'm going to keep the number. We're going to remove the logo here. So I decided to use the older style BNSF logo because it's a lot easier to remove this instead of the wedge logo which had four letters across. And then we're going to uh, redo it with our SPSF stuff. The trick is uh, we're going to have to have a black uh, lettering up here for the end of the car. But that'll be easy. So as you can see everything else is painted. Uh, we've got all the data and stuff ready to go. So it'll make it our job really easy to do instead of, as opposed to starting with a, uh, you know, completely undecorated car, for example. So that's what we're going to show you today here on the Car Shop program. So as I mentioned, I'm going to show you two techniques today, and there's actually a third one that I'll occasionally use. Um, some of the basic materials we have are right here. Obviously, we've got the freight car uh, for... One uh, method that I won't show you today, but I'll just quickly explain, is using an eraser like this to rub off the logos. Um, this one, what I'll usually do is if I have a smooth side car where it's easy to rub across, as you can see, the ribs here make it make it really hard to do that. Um, but that's one, one option. What you gotta be careful with this is you don't rub too hard or too fast, um, or too much, I should say, because sometimes that'll then take the paint off. Um, especially if you get the, the car really hot uh, rubbing it too much. Um, so that's one reason that I might avoid that sometimes. 
Um, really what you need to do in this situation is figure out what's worked best in the past with, with cars. Um, because each car has its a different unique uh, way of that the paint has been applied at the factory. And so these applications might work uh, better on certain cars than others. So what we need for the two techniques today, the first one I'll show you, we're going to use uh, the Microsol technique, um, which is a decal setting solution, and sometimes we'll um, uh, bring the logos off the cars. I haven't had much success with this. We'll start with this first and see if it works, and if it doesn't, we'll go on to the second one. With this, you also need a little bit of toilet paper, which I realize might be hard to come by these days, and then a uh, simple brush for applying this on the car. The second technique, we need a Q-tip and we need, um, oh shoot, what is this stuff called? <laughs> um, basically what, what I like to use is a jar for this stuff. Um, hold on, let me think of it real quick and I'll be back. Comet Cleaner, that's what I was thinking of. Sorry, I didn't want to put you on hold while I thought of the name. Um, anyways, I have some dried out Comet Cleaner that I need to add some water to in here. I thought I had an actual uh, can of it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So this is all I've got to work with for now. But what I do is I shake a little bit of the Comet Cleaner in a jar like this, add some water, and then with the Q-tip, kind of mix it a little bit, and then make sure you get a little bit, I'll show you a mixture of, of Comet Cleaner and water, and then uh, rub that on the car, and it usually takes it right off. Um, so this is the technique that I really like using a lot, um, which is why I keep a jar like this on hand. Uh, but anyway, so that's that that one works for a lot of different cars like Walther's, Athiern, Atlas. Uh, it, it, it especially in my experience has worked really well with Athiern cars. So we'll see what works best with this uh, Intermountain car. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is cut a couple strips of this toilet paper and put them on the car here. You want to be careful and put them where you want to remove the, the lettering and try not to get it on the lettering that you want to keep. And I'll just go ahead and get a little bit of dab this in the brush and then kind of wet this and you'll see it kind of applies right onto the car. And again here. So the nice thing about this technique is it it really only does it in the area where you've applied this um, microsol and also where you've got your your toilet paper. So now what you want to do is let that sit for two to three minutes and then come back and see if it starts coming off. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes, so let's take these off and see how it looks. Um, now, the one thing that, I, that I've read about this technique is that if you get some masking tape like this and stick it on there, it should pull it right off. Uh, I haven't had much success with this, but let's see if that works. No, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can just rub. It's not even making a dent. All right. Um, so I think we're going to use my other technique on this. But if it, if it works, this should have just come right off. It doesn't look like it's doing much of anything. Now, the other thing you could do... Yeah, it's not doing much at all. And like I said, we want to be careful because we don't want to take the paint off. So I think we're going to go straight into technique number two, which is my Comet Cleaner. So I will show that to you next. Okay, so this for this Comet technique, you want to be uh, right over a sink. And you can see I've added some water and mixed it up a little bit. Nice and frothy there. And so we've got our car. You want to also make sure that you've got a... Uh, a towel that you can rest this on. This car is going to get a little wet. So uh, basically what the technique is you take a Q-tip, like I said before, you kind of scratch it on the surface. So when you bring it up, you've got a nice amount of Comet Cleaner on your Q-tip swab. And what I do is I place a little bit there, kind of let it soak a little, just about that much. Then I'm going to do the same here, just to start letting the chemical work into the paint a little bit. Let's get some more. Um, it really comes off when you start rubbing it though. I'm going to go ahead and do the ends a little bit, get them prepped. Okay, so now we'll start rubbing. Um, like I said, every technique varies by what the, the freight car, how it's made. Um, that really determines which technique you want to use. 
And so what you want to do is just kind of gently rub it. You want to try to use the soft part of the Q-tip as much as possible. Um, wow, this, this car, I can tell, is a bit of a pain. All right. Some, like I said, some manufacturers have, have logos that are easier to come off than others. Um, Atherins, like especially their newest ones, not like the old blue box. Atherins are some of the easiest ones that I've worked with. Okay, so the goal here is to try to take off just the lettering and not the paint. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of paint there. Uh, see that with the red? Um, but if you look, it doesn't look like I'm taking any noticeable amount off. So that's good. There have been times in the past where I've had to do a slight amount of touch-up paint, which is not desirable. Now, the good thing is, is that there's going to be a decal going over this. And so that helps you with a couple things. First of all, you don't have to com get the, completely get the whole logo off if you can't, uh, because you'll be covering up part of this with a decal. And the other good news is that if you do get a little bit of paint off, hopefully the decal will cover that. <sighs> okay, so I've gotten a little bit of paint off of this, unfortunately. Um, so we might have to do a little bit of touch-up work. Um, like I said, this, this car seems to be a little harder than others. But anyways, that's the technique. I'll go ahead and work the rest of the car and show you how it looks later. Okay, so now we've gotten our car, the rest of the logos off. Um, like I said, it was a bit of a pain on this car. Uh, the ends, though, came off really nice and easily. And uh, the good thing is, is that I, I really didn't get the numbers off. So those are still on, so that's good. Might want to do just a bit of touch-up painting where this logo was, was the hardest part. So what I do after I'm done is just rinse the car off real quick with water. So you want to make sure that you uh, kind of rub it off a little bit so you don't get any Comet Cleaner residue. You want it to look like that. And then I just get a paper towel and kind of dab it gently. The nice thing about this car, I think these are perfect for operations because there's, there's no super fragile details. So it's easy to do work like this. And then, uh, yeah, as you can see, there's some a little bit of you know, white dots there. I didn't quite get the logo or the Herald off or the, the reporting marks. Um, we still have a little bit of white there. You can see where some of the paint came off. So I'll have to do a little bit of touch up. Um, that is definitely not the desired outcome of this, um, but I'm, I'm gathering that since the uh, Microsol option didn't work hardly at all, uh, that this would be a bit of a challenge. So uh, like I said, Atherin cars are a little bit easier, usually easier to do. Uh, than this um, but yeah it's always a new adventure when you have a, a manufacturer that you haven't done this to um, but i'm really looking forward to this car it's got some nice metal wheel sets and metal couplers already so that's that's great um, so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do the touch-up paint i'm going to then gloss coat the car and then make it ready for de decals So here's what our car looks like after a little bit of touch-up paint. As you can see, I used uh, some boxcar red, but it's a little bit darker. Um, and then also a little bit of gloss coat, uh, not too much. And like I said before, the, the decals will help kind of hide some of the imperfections. Um, people should notice the logo more than, than the slight changes in color. So that's what I'm hoping for. For decals, I've got some, some decals that I printed out a few years ago. Uh, these are were custom printed by Highball Graphics. There's actually some SPSF sets available for sale um, on the Highball Graphics website still, if you're interested in that. And then um, we've got some, notice the black for the ends of the cars and then the whites for the sides. So I'll go ahead and put these decals on, I'll let it dry, do some gloss coat and dull coat, and then put the trucks back on and I'll show you the final result. Here is the final product after 
the putting the decals on and adding a little bit of gloss coat and then I also added some dull coat in the form of uh, the rust-oleum frosted glass that I like to use and what I decided to do is I wanted the this car to look really almost brand new just hitting the rails um, for my early 90s era I thought this would be a, a good one for that and so instead of really weathering the trucks I left them black I don't know if you can see that really well um, but I left them black and I just faded them a little bit and added some um, some blue paint to the roller bearings here I'll just zoom up there for you so that it looks like a, basically a new truck coming out of the, the factory. And then here we see the, the ends, the black lettering there for the excess height car marking. And I had to add a little bit of white touch-up paint. You can kind of see it there on the, the decals for uh, getting them to fit nicely inside the ribs. Um, but that's basically it. There's a, a nice rebadged car with little effort. Uh, just have to rub off the the existing reporting marks and logo and then replace it and so now we've got the correct car for this layout and just to show you another example here is a covered hopper that I did a few years ago this one just an Atlas train man covered hopper that I removed the logo or the not the logo but the the reporting marks and then I had my own Ashgrove cement decals that I put on there so it's a great way to do some custom cars if you have a freelance railroad or if there's a kind of car that you're trying to model that is not made by the manufacturers. Uh, this gives you a really good place to start and it's fairly easy, um, easy work to do. So you don't have to paint the entire car. And I really do like this car from Intermountain. It seems nice. Uh, I haven't used it in the Obsession next. That'll be, or yet, that'll be the next step. Um, but I really like the, the metal wheels, the KD couplers. Um, also really good easy construction underneath you know this screws with the trucks and also screws on the coupler boxes which is nice to have get a little bit of uh, detail under here so really nice nice car for operations I think so that's what it looks like um, and uh, I hope this technique was helpful hopefully it's something that you're able to use and try there at home if, if there's a car that you need to rebadge um, but just wanted to show you that this is what I usually do uh, when I need to rebadge a car for myself. So that concludes our first episode on this car shop series. I, again, I hope this was helpful and interesting to you. Hopefully it's something that you can use at home. And we're going to be looking at other things as, as we go about with the car shops, uh, other things on the layout from, you know, car storage to maintenance on the cars to, you know, how do you press a car in service, anything like that. If there's anything specifically that you want to see regarding rolling stock equipment, leave a comment below and let me know. So thanks everyone for tuning in and I'll catch you next time on the Stockyard Industrial Lead.